Hey guys, Tyrop up here bringing you a 2v2 today. We are on Stadshut. Now today spawning in the north we've got Webster Bollock playing as Soviets and his loader is Shock Motor Heavy. Shock Rifle Frontline. And Terror Tactics teaming up with him is Stefan JF. Also playing as Soviets who has Shock Rifle Frontline. Armored Assault. And Soviet Combined Arms. Face off against some in the south. We have Sky Green playing as Ossia, who has mechanized assault, strategic reserves, and elite troops. And finally, we have Who Want When Where Why, also playing as Ossia, who has fortified armor, Hager infantry, and spearhead. In terms of ranks, uh, random teams all round. Webster Bollock around rank. 80, 7 JF around rank 120, Sky Green, and uh, who, what, when, where, why, both around rank 30 uh, random teams. It may seem a bit uh, well upside, but we're symbolic also uh, top 10 with two other factions and random twos. So it makes it seem uh, not quite so lopsided. So we've got an interesting start here from who, what, when, where, why. Double machine gun, double pyre. Don't see that too often. Back the other way, Webster Bollock having gone for a early sniper here with a tier 1 start. Also somewhat unusual. He's charging in on the conscripts. Machine gun chipping in for some extra damage, but... Conscripts refusing to drop models, so the Pyres are going to lose that one. And some Conscripts coming around the corner, though, looking for the flank. But I think he spotted that, thanks to the Pyres. Reposition Machine Gun and the Pioneers to compensate for that. But it looks like the Conscripts managing to sneak behind the wall. Oh, and they get suppressed and forced away. Pyres look like they're going to lose those Conscripts, though. Once again, some uh, bad model drops on the Conscripts. Cause the pies to win. They can win those engagements. But just, uh, yeah, didn't get lucky on the mold drops. That's how it goes. The enemy is taking what we have secured. But the Axis, you know, do have control of this fuel up here. So not the end of the world that who, what, when, where, why. It's been unable to cap it here. Conscripts do manage to sneak around the side of this machine gun, though. This one repositioning. We are trying to flank it. Wow, I'm really surprised he didn't get suppressed by that burst, but it was a super short one over the other machine gun reposition. Didn't end up retreating it, and it came in handy there, allowed him to force away that conscript squad. Did see a dive there from the conscripts onto the cutoff, and did cut the axes off there for a brief moment. So far, only one kill for the sniper, not a rapid start for that. In for another one, and there we go. Soviet HQ now includes a field hospital. Is backing this up with conscripts. So it's going to need CKT grenades at some stage. Leaving the conscripts there, they're not taking too much damage whilst they're pressed. Act as spotters for the sniper, since the sniper can't self-spot up to this range at this level of veterancy quite yet. Okay, here comes the M3. Very late M3 from Stefan, and that means that both of the Soviet players have gone for tier 1. It means they'll be very susceptible to light vehicles. Not going to have any AT guns. Is a little bit worrying. Going in for the wipe on the machine gun, only able to secure it. But you know, one of the benefits of the M3, of course, no snares. We want when, where, why hasn't gone for any grenadiers. So it's free to do quite a lot of damage, and it looks like he is going to pull that back, force away this machine gun on the far fuel. But yeah, a bit of a slow start here. From the allies. 
maybe now they can get some damage done. Sniper backed up with a good number of conscripts. A little bit clumsy here with the conscript usage. Charging in here, maybe should just attack from um, max range and a bit slow to bring the M3 in. Here it comes. Meanwhile, conscripts also harassing through the middle. And Sniper is finally stacking up some kills, up to 8 kills now. Making up for lost time. Oh, rough nade, wrong side of cover. Almost gets the whole squad. That squad also having to retreat. And wow, just doubling down on the anti-infantry, going for some shock troops here. And they, he's going to be vulnerable. Here we go, this is what I was worried about. Stiff Jave did have 80 grenades. It's a snare off, and now the 222 pulling back. Meanwhile, another 222 going hunting for the sniper. Which also has AT grenades. So they're, kind of, you know, they're somewhat prepared for that. Because it's the AT grenades to help fend off these 222s, but they're not going to be able to kill them. So Stephen JF is going to go for some guards to assist, which is a good idea. Generally, 222 is not that threatening that you have to worry about uh, getting completely overwhelmed by it with guards, unlike the Flamer half track. So, you know, AT grenades and the guards should be able to fend off the 222s. But once again, not going to be able to kill them. Oops, Dubai going for an early tier 3 tech here. I wonder if he's thinking about going for the quad. He does have quite a lot of munitions in the quad. Does match up very well against the 222. Meanwhile, Sky Green backing up his 222 with a 250, which is somewhat unusual to see someone call it in this late in the game. But they can be pretty potent at wiping squads. Does mean, of course, he has selected Nick Assault. and shock troops on the retreat path of this 222. I don't think it's going to make it home. Ooh, but they both get suppressed and he's just diving further in with the 222 here. Looks like the 250 went sniper hunting but couldn't get it. Got some AT grenades should be able to clean up more of the 222s here. and the shock troops and the axis are in such a commanding position after that look at that map control lies lack of anti-tank really biting them here and as I said you know Oops, bot did have the option to go for the quad and I think it would have been the right choice in this particular scenario just the extra bit of field presence that much earlier would have helped a lot Instead, it looks like he's same for the T70. And uh, it's going to be coming online soon, but in the meantime, they've taken a lot of damage. But yeah, don't be afraid of the quad. <laughs> Especially against us here, it is pretty good. And really good for these exact kind of scenarios where you got off to a bad start, maybe. And your fuel control is going to mean that your T70 is going to come in too late to be uh, effective. 50 getting right on top of the shock troops there. And wow, sniper from S Stephen JF as well. This is risky stuff. I feel like going for a sniper here is probably going to delay his light vehicle if he's going to go for a T-70. Oh, it's the mine there. Once it's Uraing and hoping to finish the job with an AT grenade. And there goes off. Don't quite manage to get the AT grenade off. He hasn't yet. Okay, there we go. Starts backing away with it again. And that was a lot of manpower bleed on those conscripts. Do you see a couple of squads branching all the way out here. A bit risky running all that way with your guards. Not be available to protect the uh, sniper here. And 
we go. Takes its first shot. And both the Pegreens being chased away there. Okay, no tick up. No tick up from either of the Axis players yet. Which means they're going to be late to their medium tanks. Which means that these light vehicles from the Allies are going to actually have a chance to fight themselves back onto the map. Resets up on the road and machine gun gets decrewed. So the SU-76 connect with the 222 as well. Wants to back and now going for a long range barrage trying to clear out a few of these team weapons. Axis are ah, reasonably well prepared though. They do have two packs. Yeah, nice idea here. Branch out to the far side. The sweeper. We can relieve a bit of that VP pressure. Allies already down to 280 now. Here comes the T70 running straight down the middle. A bit risky given uh, what he knew about the pack positioning earlier. But it looks like the pack is pulling all the way back. And that does allow T70 to decrease the machine gun out here. He does have... Oh, get one on this uh, half track. Can reinforce from it. So could, yeah, technically come over here and recruit this. Oh boy. Knocks that out. I don't know how he had sight of that. I, oh, I guess it was from this sniper actually. And uh, all of a sudden, a massive reversal in favor. And now the allies are just giving it to the Axis. Pack could also get decrewed here potentially. But yeah, they managed to steal away the MG42, kill. Uh, all of the light vehicles? No, still one two 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 left. But yeah, they've they've fought back valiantly here. Okay, we've got tier three going down now for Sky Green. Yeah, it's gonna Okay, he's gonna just make the tick timing. Sindri artillery, but the squads run forwards past it. Now a recon plane, that is Soviet Combined Arms by the way from Stephen JF. These greed is chasing forwards here, it gets one burst off on that sniper but has to retreat in the face of the other one. Ooh, shock troops into retreat, nice grenade, takes down one, under grenades, minor damage. And just going to charge on to the cutoff once more. Okay, who, what, when, where, why? Uh, hasn't got his tick down yet. And for another squad of Pegreens. Three Pegreens seems a little bit excessive to me. Oh. But I suppose he hasn't gone for tier one. I don't know. I don't know if I'm too big of a fan of that. Maybe if he could get like G43s on the P wings, I'd be a bit happier with that. But okay, comes with charging down the center. Sniper trying to get rid of the machine gun and does decrude there. Push the recrew with one of the Pios, trying to get out now. C76 connecting with 222, trying to smoke out. And T70 chasing away the squads on the far flank. And once again, the pack did get decrewed. I don't know how he didn't get out of there in time. And now that's going to be killed, it looks like, by the SU76. Oh. Greedy's coming in from the side, Sniper running away, Faust connecting with the SU, so Pack's still alive, and I think I heard a Talamine over here. Stephen JF losing his T70. Is that it there? Oh. 
And here we go. Flak Panzer from Skygree. I think this is actually a pretty reasonable choice. Does still do pretty good damage against the SU-76. Gets to feel a little bit earlier than the Panzer IV and it's quite effective against the high squad sizes from Soviets. So I think this is a pretty good spot to go for the Flak Panzer, especially given how shaky the Axis fuel control has been over the last few minutes. Sometimes trying to stall an extra minute or two. Get the Panzer IV over the Flak Panzer can be disastrous. You can just lose even more map control. And it can come in even slower than you expect. But the fact that he's not uh, getting a little bit more aggressive with it right now is a uh, major mistake. Especially while the SU-76 is out of commission. The damaged engine. He should be maximizing it. Maximizing damage he can do with it. We do have a recon plane up now though, so maybe that will... ...mean that he'll get a bit more bold with it. If you do too, I think that, that kind of looks like a suicide mission to me. Easily go down to uh, another AT grenade and small arms damage. Goes back to throw the second AT grenade. And here we go, SU-76 is back. Healthy again. Looks like he's going to get a AT grenade off here, but Pack returning fire on the SU-76. SU so pulling back. Also getting away. Oh, but speaking of getting away, the conscripts for Webster Bullock do not. And they go down. Now he's a uh, very light infantry. Probably needs to rebuild one of those squads of conscripts. Or, you know, just get a sh squad of shock troops. That the risk there is he's not going to have enough snares. Could leave his sniper a little bit exposed. There's still just 222 running around, remember. And go for a dive on the sniper. Have given the opportunity. Smoke grenade out to try and evade that machine gun. So seems it's looking for the 222, but unsuccessful. And another branch out to the far VP from the Allies. Which is a nice move. Maybe Skygreen. No, no, it's not. It actually wouldn't work out, never mind. So VPs are stalled, but guys did fight back quite nicely, you know. They've drained maybe 20 VPs in, in the same period the Axis have drained 100. So they're making their way back into this game, and the double snipers, if they don't die, they can cause the uh, manpower situation to become very lopsided. Oof, double pegrins. Need in, forcing away the guards. Issue 76, forcing back the 2 2 He smokes out. Ooh, the last squad of conscripts go down. To the flak pans, a little bit clumsy there from Webster Bullock. And uh, what was that? What was that? How did that die up there? Was that from the pack? Did he run over like a mine that was pined up there somehow? And it's a mystery to me. T-34, where is the pack? Got one nearby. Quite in range though. 222 going in. Oh, and he does pick off the sniper this time. And now smoking, trying to escape from the T-34. Might be able to. It's a little bit faster. T-34 unsuccessful with the chase down. So there we go. Sniper down for Stephen JF. And with Webster Bullock also having some questionable squad preservation, Axis are pulling back into the game now with the army side's lead. Also have a counter snipe attempt here from Skygreen, getting himself a sniper, looking for the VET 3 Soviet sniper. 
This is where the recon planes both ways can come in handy. I don't know. Oh, here we go. Right in front of the Aussie sniper. Does he notice? Oh man, he's right there for so long. Okay, here we go. Here we go. There we go. Sniper down. Aussie sniper escapes. Notice the Aussie sniper got vet one straight away. Usually, you know, like vet zero snipers won't give you vet one. They think they give you about two thirds of a rank. But yeah, fully vet sniper will give you vet one. Can be handy if you need to uh, quickly fire an incendiary shot after going for that counter snipe. Okay, Panther coming in for who, what, when, where, why. Let's see what he can get done with it. There's one, two, three, four on the field at the moment. But not too much else. Mr. Bullock looks like he's saving for his IS-2. Rather confusingly as well, we're going for a munitions cache here. So you're trying to get himself any extra forms of anti-tank which is uh, very risky he's not having too much luck getting around this machine gun here even the conscripts pushing them away and the resist just continuing to blast away he even pulled back with the panther and <laughs> takes a couple more hits it's a big repair bill Incendiary artillery coming down. We're going to clear out the MG in the center. Meanwhile, Stephen JF is trying to inch his way forwards over here. Put some pressure on now. I'm getting a Zis barrage on top of the pack. Speaking of uh, barrages, light artillery barrage coming down. This is back to Zis. Comes into low health. and comes the Panther. Low health, though. Looking for. T-34 kill, but not successful. Oh, pack getting forced away. Got hit by the button, can't escape. And it looks like that's going to be the end of the flak panzer. Small mistake there. About to come in across, but so low. What does he hope to achieve here against the IS-2? Oh, with this rear armor exposed now, down it goes. And both the packs go down there for the Axis team. If they are unable to get these back under their control, I th think that might be GG, honestly. Uh, he sh should probably go for the steal on that. That was just some abysmally bad panther play though from who what when where why it's like leaving it out here getting repaired in front of the zis taking like two or three extra hits and then following that up by coming over when he's two shots from death trying to fight the is2 and then proceeding to lose it because of that so jf not taking any chances regards to that pack falling back into axe's hands this means the il2 bombing run to finish it off Now branching out to the far VP as well. Things are looking very good for the allies here. We have lost a squad. But yeah, that was some clumsy team weapon play. Both the Axis leaving their packs close to the center. Not well guarded at all. And then also Sky Green packing up this pack at a bad time when his flat pans are needed support. But slow setting it up again. Things went wrong there for the Axis. Got a century dropped on the Axis team weapons here. Triple cap now against the Axis as well. They well, just about need to get a wriggle on here. They are falling out of this game very quickly. We've got a tiger coming in from Sky Green. Five fuels time though. And that turned things around. Pack gonna get decrewed here again. Let's 
somehow surviving to get another shot off. I don't know. That was a miracle. Back. Comes back and takes his hands. This IS-2 doing so much damage. Now getting a second pack. Which I think is a fair choice. And here we go. Can the Axis now mount a comeback after all of those losses? They do have uh, some pretty decent tools all of a sudden. You know, double packs, tricks. Should be pretty strong against the IS-2. But the incendiary rounds from the machine gun here. Blocking who, what, when, where, why. Out of uh, pushing from this lane. Is that a howitzer now? On the drop from Stephen JF into this corridor. Oh, I has to take some other hit, but no snares. So I uh, should be able to get away just fine. Sniper also escaping on low. Oh, guts. Hey, retreat. T34 coming in and. Uh, Things do end up retreating. While Tiger locking down the far flank for Sky Green, now pushing across to the center. And I think Coming across this way. Long range Kachusha, though. And I pretty well avoided it because of that. A little bit risky going for the Kachucha here, not having any supporting anti-tank. Safer choice would have been an SU-85. Tough deal with this Tiger, but... Alright, we'll see how he gets on. That's too back healthy. Pressing the far side. Is this zoning the tiger out of the middle? Let's read the fire again. Maybe trying to bait the packs into position here with his eyes too. Then uh, allow the packs to do the damage, and that looks like what's going to happen here. Takes a while for those shells to start dropping though. And it looks like they might be targeting a little bit deep. I mean, he's going down there to the double P greens. Senior artillery now, forcing a slight reposition here. Maybe they're going to get herded into the howitzer, and that's exactly what happens. Ooh, that was very close as well. Double packs here. T34 could be in trouble. Oh, get away. This one took a little bit too long to set up. Get the killing blow. is very low but IS-2 still healthy and Pat could be in a little bit of trouble here okay second pack comes across to assist and uh, this pack should definitely pull back now for some healing well, good activation of uh, target weak point it's not getting an extra shot off because of that Trouble. Ooh. Kachusha almost takes down the machine gun as well. Uh, artillery dropped on the uh, AT gun and he gets the kill. Should come in here maybe for the follow up. Nope, he's got guards there. It's a little bit risky now. Kind of doing a makeshift command tiger, you know? The tiger calling in light artillery brush. Very similar to what Yoko W Tiger gets up to, those kind of shenanigans. Enemy forces capturing supply signal. But yeah, 
game it seems to be pretty even at the moment. Take a look at army sizes. Maybe a slight edge towards the allies, but very close. We have 200 points remaining. Yeah, here comes the elephant now for who, what, when, where, why, and that maybe brings the axis into the lead in terms of army size. Ooh, squad down there. And for the Faust, it ends up cancelling, I think, at the last second. Shrek's bouncing, not having much success. And I think he dodged an uh, IL-2 by run with the pack. Just nearly went down, but maybe the Shock Troop's going to take care of that now. And comes the Tiger. To help with the Shock Troops. And there comes the Elephant to deal with the IS-2. Doesn't have the IL-2 bowing run, so can't really go for like a suicidal ram here. Hoping to knock it out. Enemy are our Has uh, changed the angle of his howitzer here to assist. Not hitting too much at the moment. Little shock troops very low in the middle. It looks like they're both going to get away. He's ready five takes a shot and misses at the elephant. One connecting, but now it's quite low. And a lot of repairs required now for these allied tanks. Should allow the Axis to have some decent map control here. Another long range Kachusha. Not hitting too much. It's nice these kept the 2 alive, can still be used for scouting, even though it doesn't have the spawning scopes. So there's some pretty good line of sight. Assist uh, the elephant with his long range shooting if he doesn't have the munitions for the recon plane, which he does currently. This is sneaky a bunker. Sky Green looking over the VP. S35 right there. Maybe we'll be seeing this with a recon plane as well. Could quite easily kill that right now, but it's alright. Okay, dropping in incendiary artillery, thanks to the recon plane. Do good damage to the pack, might even get the D crew here, very close to it. And this is a scenario where maybe you could consider using a green uh, med kit on it. So you have to return it to base to heal it up. They do have their purposes every now and then. Against flame weapons especially, they tend to do a lot of health damage but not drop models. Or things like uh, phosphorus. Back in a risky position right the way forwards with shock troops right on top of a double grenade. It's the D crew. Okay, coming in. It's one AT grenades and now some howitzer fire coming in. Oh! Oh, that shock troop went down in the blink of an eye there. Tiger and Flat Panzer just melting it. Oh boy, what we have here? T-34 coming in with a really deep maneuver. Looking to knock out this pack. And Shrek's going hunting for it. This one getting knocked out. Now going to get on the rear arm of this elephant, but the Tiger is there. Doesn't quite get the block off either. He's 35 charging forwards. Oh, he's ready for coming in from the side. Elephant could be in a little bit of trouble here. Goes for the ram on the tiger. Gets an engine crit, but he's ready five does go down, and here come the Shreks looking for the other S-85. And that goes down too. Now the tiger needs to get an angle. Oh no, he got stunned. Target weak point from the elephant. Stopping the IS-2 from getting any further shots on, and there we go. Elephant escapes alive. And that just didn't quite work out from the Allies. There's enough anti-tank in the vicinity from the Axis that that aggressive play did not pay off. For well, the Allies, they nearly took down the Alpha, but not quite. And yeah, after that, they lost too much. IS-2 down, T-34 down. Both SU-85s. Way behind in army size, as you can see. I think that's a reasonable time to call GG. Maybe slightly early, but not too bad.
Well, I'll wrap on that, guys. If you like your game to be cast by me, details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you off the next installment. Goodbye, and good luck.